So this is the Labis ET4. It's a $250 printer and for those $250, you actually get more features on this one than sometimes you do on more expensive printers. And at least for me, when I look at a printer in this price point or really any price point, the, uh, the thing I look for the most is something that's just simple, straightforward, it just works. And right out of the box, this thing, the ET4, is checking those boxes. Everything in the bottom here comes pre-assembled in this big metal case, no fuss. You literally just put the gantry on, slide on the hot end, plug everything in and you're good to go. Features wise, the one that matters the most to me is automatic bed leveling and I'm happy to report the ET4 does come with it out of the box and surprisingly, it's not just a BL touch bolted to the side, it's actually some sort of non-contact switch and it's built right into the hot end and it works surprisingly well and it's easy to use. You just go to the page, hit level the bed and uh, wait. The build surface is actually really good as well. One thing I noticed on other printers I've used like this is that Sometimes the, the build plate will heat very well in the center and then be kind of cool towards the outside and that leads to warping issues. But this one is pretty solid and it heats pretty much, pretty evenly all the way through and I didn't have any issues with warping even when I printed out thin objects such as this. Uh, they stuck very well and they came out perfectly flat, which is awesome. On the back side, you also get a filament runout sensor, which is nice to have. You don't always see that at this price point. And the extruder, not much to say there, pretty simple, but that is a good thing because I didn't have any issues with slipping or grinding on filament, it just worked. And that is the number one thing I like to have in my printers is that they just work. And then when it comes to printing, so when you print the models that come on the uh, memory card from the factory, they're normally pretty good because they're tuned for that specific printer, but I like to just kind of go into my slicer of choice and print out something in a preset and see how it does. So for a printer like this, uh, 220 by 220 by 250, it's pretty similar to the Ender 3. So I just go into Prusa Slicer, which is the slicer I like to use, pick uh, the Ender 3 profile and print something out. And this is the first print that I did and I actually used the filament that comes with this printer. Uh, it's obviously just a little trial package, but it's actually a nice little silk white and the print came out surprisingly good, especially considering there's no tuning or anything. It's just sliced with the Ender 3 profile and that's it. The only thing that came out a little goofy was the top of the smokestack. I'm not sure what happened there, but other than that, we're looking pretty solid. Now, although I think this is a really solid little printer, it doesn't do everything perfect. For one, it's not really quiet. You wouldn't call this printer silent by any stretch of the imagination, but you know, for the features you get uh, at this price point, if you had to make concessions somewhere, I would do it where it comes to the noise output. I'd rather have something that prints good and is a little loud than something that prints horribly, but it's really quiet. So that being said, so what can we do with this little printer? Well, I think uh, I have an idea. Now I've had this actually for quite a while. I didn't print this fan on the ET4. I've had this for a lot longer than I've had this printer. But essentially I was on Thingiverse and I was strolling around and I noticed somebody had posted a nice model of the Rolls-Royce Trent series jet engine high bypass fan. And I took a couple shots at printing it. The TiVo wasn't able to do it. And eventually I did print this. So I printed this actually on the Prusa a while ago. And it's kind of just been sitting here cause it's just a nice stationary model. But when I got this little printer, I was like, you know what? It's time to take this stationary model and turn it up a little bit. So that's the idea today. We're gonna to try to power this big, like 280 millimeter fan and try to cool my uh, test bench over there in comparison to my A12X25. And I think if it works, this might, it might not be the last time you see this uh, fan. I think I'm gonna to try to do something else with it. So stick around for that. But today let's, let's find out if we can make this thing powered. And the way we're gonna do it is, well, we're gonna use that fan and all these pieces that I printed on the ET4. But before that, today's video is sponsored by Antec F-Lux Platform. The F-Lux Platform is a new industry-leading, highly efficient design by Antec, featuring an advanced case structure for excellent airflow combined with five pre-installed 120 millimeter fans. A core element of this case design was to enhance GPU cooling performance. The F-Lux platform adopts the design of a powerful ventilation system via the lower right side panel. 
which pulls cool air into the case through the lower PSU shroud and then up into the main interior, specifically targeting the GPU. And not only does it pack awesome performance, it looks good while doing it. And those five fans it comes with, three of them are RGB. Oh yeah, RGB. The DF600 Flux punches way above its weight class when it comes to features at this price point. So check the link in the description below to pick up your very own DF600 Flux by Antec. Now it doesn't look like much, but essentially all this stuff is going to hopefully go together and kind of make a fan shroud that's going to be able to take this giant 280 millimeter fan, hold the motor that's supposed to turn it, and also bring the size down to 120 millimeters so it fits on this radiator. And it should be interesting. I haven't gotten, <laughs> I haven't put this together, so it might not work, which will be, which will be pretty embarrassing for myself, but I guess we'll find out here shortly. So stand by. So uh, as you can see, Things went together a lot better than I thought they were going to, given I spent like 20 minutes designing this. But the motor's mounted, everything's put together, a little bit of tape later, and we got everything sealed up. And uh, as you can see, the motor is just mounted to this little hub that's going to interface with this model, like so. And then the nose cone is going to lock it all in place. And that's it. There's no glue, no tape. It's just a little bit of an interference fit to hold it together. And we're gonna see if it works. And I, I, it, I don't know if it's going to, because let's be honest, the guy that designed this fan, he did a great job, but it was meant to be a, like a stationary model. And then I come along and I'm like, let's put a motor in it. So we're gonna see how well she works. We're gonna aim for 2000 RPMs, cause that's what the Noctua does, and uh, let it run, see if it cools. And if it does, we'll crank up the speed. And if it doesn't, we'll crank up the speed. It should be fun. All right, let's see if we can get it to 2000. Mm -hmm. We might have to add glue. We'll have to wait and see. I don't know if that fit's gonna hold, but let's find out. Yeah, we're only at 418 RPMs. We got a ways to go. We're gonna need some glue. So we'll use my favorite here, this Weld On 4. We'll put a little bit on the nose cone here and see if we can't get her to bite. Once this is on there though, there's no turning back. It goes on and it can't come back off. Give it a second to dry and <laughs> give it another shot. Well, the first problem is my power supply can't give it enough oomph. Oh. My shroud is in the way. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to modify this. We're gonna have to lose the shroud, unfortunately, if we want this thing to spin at any rate of speed. So at this point, uh, it's not looking good to cool this, uh, this CPU. We couldn't get up to speed because the shroud was uh, hitting the blades. And I did notice something else I had my, when I had my hand there. Uh, I felt like a lot of air was coming this way rather than that way. And the, and the blades are spinning the right direction. It might just be due to the shape of the duct. Uh, so yeah, not our best showing, but we're not done yet. Let's, let's, uh, let's try without the duct around there. We shouldn't have any worries about the blades hitting anything. Uh, we might be able to get air to flow through. We'll just have to wait and see. We're only getting about 600 RPM. And most of the air feels like it's getting thrown out the top, really, to tell you the truth. I don't feel any air hardly moving past the radiator. We can start the trust test, but I don't have high hopes. Oh, we're losing it. Motor's over overheating and pulling itself out. So that is a bummer. Well, what else can we do? Oh, <laughs> A horrible tragedy has befallen our fan. Things have, uh, <laughs> things have taken a turn for the worst. Our like nice little jet engine looking deal has uh, evolved into a fan on a stick. 
and it's, it's, it's not even a nice stick. It's just like an old boom arm that I have from a drone, which actually is coming in clutch. All these uh, random drone parts I have from a long time ago are really proving helpful. But I guess since we can't cool our CPU, we uh, might as well explode it. Contact. Oh, she got more power in this time. We can start blowing stuff around behind it. Oh! God, jeez. That's, that's gotta be hot. Yeah, it's a little toasty. So essentially, it's a little too much fan for too little motor. I could have went, I do have uh, an RC car, like a Traxxas Rustler motor we could use, but I think we, we're we gonna need to do some printing. So although that didn't work, and we didn't really get to cool anything, we did explode that fan and it was <laughs> it was a lot cooler than I thought. I didn't think, I didn't expect it just to fall off there after it melted through, but it did. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any other ideas, leave me a comment down below. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. We'll see you next time.